Thank you, Valeria, for that beautiful song. If you have your Bibles with you, I invite you to open them to the book of Luke, chapter 18. If you have your iPad or your iPhone and you want to look through it on your Bible app, uh, Luke 18, we're going to be reading verses 1 through 8. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart, saying, There was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard men. Now there was a widow in that city, and she came to him, saying, Get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward he said within himself, Though I do not fear God nor regard men, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said, and shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Good morning. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Um, we're missing our young people today. There, Dee Dee is with the, the kids, uh, both the deans and, and some of our other staff. They took all the kids over to California this weekend to, uh, to pick oranges and distribute them to some of the homeless shelters over there. So, so that's where all the, the, that's where the academy is. Um, Unfortunately, uh, you know, Dee Dee, Dee Dee leaves and, and I get sick, so uh, I don't have a nurse to take care of me. It's, it's like, I'm a terrible patient. And so uh, that I, I should be have feeling waves of sympathy washing over me at this point. Um, Really enjoyed the thank you, young people, and Ava for the great song service. That was awesome. Nice uh, Christmas present there, Elias. Good, nice. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. And uh, I tell you, uh, we are so blessed to have Miss Beverly uh, Bell playing the organ for us. I just, I just, uh, that that offertory was fantastic. Man. So. Uh, since we've been blessed so much already, uh, let us uh, bow our heads and, and ask the Lord to be with us for the message today. Lord, we are thankful and grateful for your goodness to us. We're thankful that Jesus loves us. We're thankful that we can sing praises, Lord, to your name and play praises. And, and we ask you to accept uh, the praise from our grateful hearts, uh, be it from our hands or, or our voices. And we thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I love this uh, story. Uh, Jesus told two parables on prayer. And by the way, before I uh, uh, begin, there's uh, a prayer rally this afternoon at Camelback that you're all in, invited to. How many were planning on going to that anyway? Um, at, I think it's at five o'clock, and I'm supposed to. T I was told that I have a part in it, so I guess I better be there. So, so. Uh, could I get somebody to bring me a Kleenex so that I don't drip on anything here? This is it's one of those days. So, awesome. Thank you, Cal. I appreciate it. I'll just take, I'll keep the whole box. <laughs> All right. You got that too. All right, good. I'll share with you. <laughs> Okay. By the way, we have a, a uh, Mr. Turner uh, with us today, and he has moved into town here. Mr. Turner taught uh, government, and what else did you teach, sir? A lot of things as a faculty uh, way back in the day. Huh? All right, all good. Prison ministry, was that to the academy here, or no? I can't. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. All right. So uh, we're we are blessed to have have you here today, Brother Turner. And um, 
Dee Dee actually worked for him for, uh, I think, a couple of years. She was his faithful grader and reader and appreciated his kindness and, and uh, during our time here at Thunderbird Academy. All right, good. <laughs> um, this, uh, Jesus told two parables about prayer that uh, I appreciated uh, Jennifer's uh, children's story because because uh, it fit right in with what we're going to speak about today, uh, about prayer. Uh, Jesus told two parables, this, this one in uh, uh, Luke chapter 18 and another one in uh, uh, Luke chapter tw uh, 12. And we're going to look at uh, both of them just a little bit. Um, uh, Jesus told his disciples a prayer, a parable. A parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning, Right? That's, a, that's what a parable is. It's an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. So we have this uh, verse that, that George read for us. That Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. In a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in town who kept, sounds like our, our, our government sometimes. Doesn't, doesn't fear God, they don't care what people think. Now there was a widow in town who kept coming to him with a plea, grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. Now this is the NIV, George read it from the, uh, from the King James, I think, and when it says, uh, so she won't weary me with her continual uh, coming. Uh, and the Lord said, listen to what the unjust says, and will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? So I want to just talk about some of the things that, that Jesus is wanting to tell us in this particular parable before we move to the next one, which is very similar. Jesus wants us to always pray and not to lose heart. You know, one of the first things that, that suffers in my personal life when I become discouraged and depressed is my prayer life. Have you guys found that to be true for yourselves? One of the first things to suffer when I become depressed or become discouraged or just feel like the, that the burdens of the world are too much for me to bear, um, I, my prayer life uh, suffers. And I'm, I'm, I'm ashamed to say that because it should be the, the other way around. The heavier my burdens the, and the more that I feel the weight of the world on me, the more that should drive me to prayer, shouldn't it? It should be the other way around for me, but I, I'm human. Um, and that's the way it is. So, uh, Jesus said, always pray, don't lose heart, don't lose your faith, don't lose your courage, don't lose your confidence in God, because that's what happens when we stop to pray. When we stop praying, we're actually losing our confidence in God that He can actually make a difference in whatever's going on in our life. Isn't that true? I found it to be true for myself. Uh, I can't help but think of a good godly Daniel. Uh, he must have been under incredible pressure. Uh, as a, in his high government official, uh, people attacking him from every side, uh, mistrust and subterfuge and politics and all these things going on. And Daniel, he's not a young man anymore, but he still, three times a day, opens his window toward Jerusalem and prays to God. That was his habit. That was his routine. And nothing was going to break that uh, habit and that routine for them. So the, per the, the purpose of this uh, parable and the other one that we're going to talk about is Jesus wants us to know that he is listening. And I thank uh, Valeria for that beautiful song because it fits right in. God knows, God sees, God hears. He knows what, what, what's in our soul. He, he hears what's, what, what's, what's in our heart and he sees what we're going through. So God is listening and he is willing. God is listening and he is willing. I want to especially focus in on these uh, last two verses because Jesus specifically ties in prayer with the conditions of the world before his second coming. Now, I, as a Seventh-day Adventist, I believe that Jesus is coming soon. I, I, I think that Jesus uh, is trying to tell us a, f a few things in these l last two verses. I, uh, what, look at what Jesus said. It says... 
And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust said, and will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones, for his elect, the King James says, who cry out to him day and night. Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see they get justice in quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? So we're in the context of the second coming in these two verses, are we not? We're in the context of the things that are going on in the world before Jesus comes again. So what that tells me is, even though uh, that we have the promise of Jesus coming, it has been somewhat delayed, has it not? We wonder, how long is, it, how long is this going to go on? How, how much worse can things get? Will he keep putting them off? Yes, there's a delay. There's a delay in the coming of Jesus. One thing we can learn. Things have deteriorated uh, drastically as far as the, the world is concerned, as far as the, the morality of, the, of, the, of our society is concerned. People, people are, are losing their, their uh, you know, as it says in, in the Scripture, uh, uh, the love of many will wax cold. What happens when there's no more love? What happens when people are not treating each other with, with kindness or respect? What happens when the basic respect for human life and for human dignity and for, and for the morals that we've all shared for, for a long time, what happens when all of that is taken away? Society begins to, to deteriorate rapidly. And so here we are, we know what's going to, to happen in the world. God's people have nowhere else to turn. They know that only God's intervention will save them. So they have lost all confidence in self. And the Bible says they cry out to God day and night. Is that a picture of what's going to be happening right before Jesus comes? God's people will, will have nothing else to stand on. Only the solid rock of Jesus Christ. As the, the young people sang for us, cornerstone. That's a picture of what we will need to have the experience of Christ, that Christ is our rock. He's our solid rock. When everything else is moving, when everything is there, doesn't seem to be any solid ground anywhere else. Jesus is our cornerstone. He's our solid rock. And God's people will have lost all confidence in everything. Everything, all self-supporting things will be taken away. And they are looking to Jesus for salvation. And they are crying out to him day and night. That tells me about the prayer life of God's remnant people right before Jesus comes again. They're going to be crying out to God day and night. And finally, what that teaches me is that God hears them. It may seem like he's not listening. It may seem like their prayers are not going past the ceiling. But this text from the lips of Jesus assures me that God hears. And he will avenge. He will save. The last uh, sentence is, uh, is an interesting sentence. It says, nevertheless, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith on the earth? Well, what can we draw from all this? This tells me, uh, when I look at this passage, it says prayer and faith go hand in hand. The last, the last verse says, I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly when they, they're crying out to him day and night. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? So Jesus equates the prayer life of the remnant with the faith of the remnant. Jesus equates the, the, uh, the, what's going on around the world the, with the, uh, the, the t terrible things that are happening, and he equates the prayer life of the remnant, those people that are crying out to him day and night with faith. Prayer and faith go hand in hand. Remember what James said in James chapter, uh, James chapter 5? He says, uh, you know, let the elders come and anoint the sick, and the prayer of faith will raise him up. The prayer of faith will raise him up. Number two, it says... Uh, uh, the, what this tells me is, can, can you switch that? There it goes. Okay. Prayer and faith go hand in hand. Number two, it tells me prayer is the best antidote for discouragement. I don't know if you guys have found that in your life, but I hope you do. Prayer is the best antidote for discouragement. When I'm discouraged, when, I, when, th when things are, are going on and as far as I'm concerned and in my personal life that I can't handle, that I can't deal with, the prayer is the best antidote for that. It's interesting to me that, you know, the devil tries to mix that up in my mind. Um, number three, God hears and answers the prayer of faith. 
Jesus assures us that he will avenge. Uh, that, that sounds like a, a kind of a, a, a strange way to say, but, but when there's a lack of justice, what we need is a real avenger, not some uh, Hollywood uh, mock-up of it. Jesus is the, the, the only real, true avenger. Uh, number four, the importance of prayer will increase as we near the second coming. Is prayer important now? Yes, it is. Will prayer become even more important as we uh, come closer and closer to the time of Jesus coming? I believe it will. The importance of prayer will only increase as the coming of Jesus approaching. Okay, uh, number five, those who are waiting for Jesus will be crying out to him nonstop. Whenever you're walking, do you, do you guys pray whenever you're jogging? <laughs> whenever you're taking your daily walk, whenever you're walking the dogs around, do you pray? How about when you're walking through the mall? Do you, do you pray for all those people when you're walking through the mall? When you're on the ride at Six Flags? <laughs> we need to, to cultivate always having a heart that, that is turning to God. God, he, God sees, God hears, God knows. He's looking into our hearts. So God's people, those waiting for Jesus, will be crying out to Him nonstop. And we need to start that now. And finally, Jesus links faith, prayer, and his second coming all together. And I find that uh, the, probably the most useful thing to me when Jesus is, is referring to his second coming, when I come, when the Son of Man returns, will there be faithful prayers on the earth? Not prayers, prayers. Will there be faithful prayers on the earth when I return? Because, see, th this is the deal. Prayer is an act of faith. When I kneel before the God of the universe, I am, a, I, am uh, I think of uh, Hebrews 11 and verse 6, one of my favorite verses in the Bible. It says, he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. We diligently seek him through prayer. There's a similar story to this one that, that I want to look at in Luke chapter 11, verses 5 through 8. Uh, Jesus said to them, suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A, f a friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, don't bother me. The doors are already locked. My children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and get you as much as you need. <laughs> um, the King James says, uh, borrow. The NIV says, lend. Uh, you know, but when you borrow something, that kind of assumes that you're going to get it back, Right? Well, what kind of doofus uh, says, hey man, can I, can I borrow some bread? <laughs> can I borrow something to eat? You know, I'll, I'll return it when I'm done with it, right? <laughs> can I borrow a piece of pizza? Have you ever had anybody say, you know, can I borrow a piece of pizza? This guy, this guy, this story, it reminds me of my brother-in-law, Robert. He's a, a wonderful guy that is very irritating. And I love him. I love him very much. We used to live next door to each other, and he would come over and borrow my stuff. And he never returned it. I had to go over and find it. And uh, he usually broke it while he had it. I love him dearly. He really is my favorite, my, my favorite brother-in-law, but he is the most irritating guy in the world. And he reminds me of this guy. Bang, 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 bang. Can you imagine being, imagine being late, you know, in bed? It's midnight. It's midnight for Pete's sake. I'm, I'm getting old here. I go to bed, you know. I, who in the world? Honey, is somebody knocking on the door? Bang, bang, bang. Yeah, somebody's knocking on the door. Oh, it's Robert. <laughs> what time is it? It's midnight. Midnight? Just ignore him. <laughs> Maybe he'll go away. <laughs> bang, 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 bang. He's not going away. <laughs> Stumble out of bed. I was going to bring my, my robe and my little slippers that I, that I said, 
and put them on the, but I thought, nah, you guys don't want to see that. That's a. So I said, Robert, what do you want? Hey, man, uh, do you have any of that frozen pizza from Costco? I got some friends over, we're playing Rook, and, and uh, you know, that's a good Adventist card game, right? <laughs> I got some friends over, we're, pl we're playing, playing Rook, and we, we got hungry. You can, can, you give me, can you give me some of that pizzas? And I'm like, Robert, dude, call Papa John's. <laughs> call Papa John's, uh, you moron, leave me alone. He says, they don't deliver this late. <laughs> they stop delivering at midnight, and it's 12.01. Well, I don't deliver at midnight either. And get, a, get, get go back to bed. Bang, 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 bang. Come on, man. I turn to my wife and I say, he's not going to quit, is he? <laughs> she says, no, he's not going to quit. Just give him the pizza, she says. So, so I get up. I said, fine. If it will shut him up, I'll give him my Costco pizza. That's the story, basically, in a nutshell. Where is God in this story? Where is God? Who's God? Me? No, no, no. That's the point of the story is God is not in this particular parable. God's not there. God's saying, look at what happens to you guys when you're, you know, if you, if, if that's the point that Jesus is making, if you're willing to help somebody just to get them to leave you alone, how much more is your heavenly father willing to help you? Um, it says that down in the, down in the, in, in another, uh, another verse in, in, uh, in verse 13 of Luke 11, it says, if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Yeah, so in these two parables, we don't see, God is not represented by anyone in these parables. God's not represented by the un, unjust, unjust judge. God is saying, if these evil people will give you what you ask for just because you keep on asking. How much more will I, how much more will your heavenly Father who loves you more than life itself be willing to pour into your life everything that you need? Everything that you need. Look at what, what Psalm 84 verse 11 says. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does He withhold from those whose walk is blameless. What a great promise that is. Now there's a job for us, there's a work for us to trust God and to obey, to be obeying Him, to be following His will, to be following His way, to, to be walking in, 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 the, in the truth as, as far as possible for us. But the Bible assures us that if our heart is right before God, He will withhold no good thing to us because He loves us. No good thing. You know, in both of these stories, the, the widow and the, the midnight pizza, they both get what they wanted, not because somebody cared about them. Quite the opposite. They got what they wanted because they wouldn't stop asking. They were so irritating that they got what they wanted. Can we irritate God? By asking him for things. Now, I don't know if you can read this. It's uh, Steps of Christ, page 100. It's in chapter 11. It's called The Privilege of Prayer. I invite you to, uh, to go home and, and get that little book out and read it. Read that chapter on prayer. It says, Keep your wants, your joys, your sorrows, your cares, and your fears before God. You cannot burden him. You cannot irritate him. <laughs> You can't burden him. You can't weary him. He who numbers the hairs of your head is not indifferent to the wants of his children. The Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy, James 5.11. 
His heart of love is touched by our sorrows and even by our utterances of them. Take to Him everything that perplexes the mind. Nothing is too great for Him to bear, for He holds up worlds. He rules over all the affairs of the universe. Nothing in any way concerns our peace is too small for Him to notice. There is no chapter in our experience too dark for Him to read. There is no perplexity too difficult for Him to unravel. No calamity can befall the least of His children. No anxiety harass the soul, no joy cheer, no sincere prayer escape the lips of which our Heavenly Father is unobservant or in which He takes no immediate interest. Did you know that? God is interested in what you have to say. He's interested in how you feel. He's interested in your joys, in your sorrows, in your, in your hopes, in your fears. He's interested in what you're worried about. He wants to hear from you. He wants to hear from you. How much more, Jesus said, how much more will your heavenly Father? Look at what Jesus promised his disciples in John chapter 16, verse 26 and 27. He said, In that day you will ask in my name. I am not saying I will ask the Father in your behalf. No, the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. Again, prayer and the assurance of God's love, faith, go hand in hand. I don't know what's going on in your life right now. There may be pain, there may be trials, there may be heartaches. I do know, as the old song says, what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. And what a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. When the Son of Man comes, Jesus says, will he find faith on the earth? Brothers and sisters, prayer is an act of faith. And Jesus is here in this very room right at this very moment to reward your faith if you will talk to him. Can we bow our heads? Lord Jesus, thank you for hearing. Thank you for knowing. Thank you for seeing. Lord, a lot of us have uh, made different kinds of New Year's resolutions uh, this year, but no resolution that we make will come under more attack than our resolution to pray. Because our enemy knows that uh, when we pray, that all of his power is harmless. So Lord, as you said, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? May he find prayer and praise in our hearts and on our lips. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.